Welcome to the world of sex. This is a show for everyone who is a human being. It is Friday, June 11th, 2021. Happy Friday. I feel fortunate that uh, I have had the right people say the right things to me to bring me around to, to thinking like, you know, when people are being outwardly racist or sexist, mm -hmm. it yeah. is my job as a person who has privilege in this society to mm -hmm. use that privilege to shut that shit down yeah, as much absolutely. as I can. Yeah. And yep. so in recent years, I have done that and it has been uncomfortable and completely yeah. necessary. Yep. Because you, these people are being attacked mm -hmm. that are having slurs or racism or sexism hurled at them. They're being attacked and someone right. needs to stand up for those, for, for those people. Remember that Gillette commercial that everybody got really mad about? <laughs> the, the Gillette. Mad at so many things, I can't keep them straight. It was basically, do you remember it though? Uh, Gillette uh, razors, they were like, um, you know, it used to be the best a man can get, but then they made this commercial that was just like, hey guys, we got to step up for women. And like, and it was just like, uh, it's a really cool commercial. And um, it was just like, uh, hey, actually, Sarah had that idea first. So why don't we let Sarah talk? And, you know, it was really cool. And it was nice because I was like, yeah, we do need you. And, and there was some, well, why don't women step up for themselves? And it's like, we've been trying. We've tried for so many years. And so it's like, we need men who like, who are allies. Like, yeah, just, you know, like, you have to be an ally. You just have to. What percentage of women say they always have an orgasm during sex with their partner? This is penetration sex. This is any kind of orgasm during sex with their partner. So I guess the question you would have to interpret, what do these people consider to be sex? What do they, yeah, so. <sighs> okay. Um, my thinking is like this now. If they're uh, writing, in an anonymous survey, if it's an anonymous survey, I think that women will be honest. And maybe later we, we can discuss why women fake orgasms. But um, I think 12% uh, of women say that they always orgasm with their partner. In this particular survey, 29%. Wow, all right, all right. Um, Which is cool. much higher than you thought, but yeah. still disappointingly low. Yeah. Well, and I think though, honestly, like for guys, they're always going to have an orgasm, probably pretty much always like uh, whatever, if the guy, if there was a guy's version of it, I'd say they, I'd say like 90% of guys say that they always have an orgasm. But I will say as a female, sometimes like I am enjoying the sex, but I'm like, I know it's just not going to happen. Sure. And like, I just know that's why I, I couldn't, I wouldn't ever say I always have an orgasm because sometimes I don't and that's okay. Um, yeah. And I think that's something that's really frustrating also because guys have been kind of taught through movies or whatever that if the woman hasn't come, then they aren't doing it right. And that mm -hmm. they have to try really hard to make the woman come, which then if the woman in turn knows that it's not gonna happen but they don't wanna disappoint you or even worse, are worried that you'll get upset if you're like, it's okay, it's not gonna happen. Um, then, you know, so I know so many guys who are like, why do women fake orgasms? And it's like, well, there's a lot of factors. And um, sometimes it's just feeling too much pressure. Sometimes I'm just fucking tired and I wanna tell you to stop, but I know that you're just gonna break your little heart if I tell you to or something. Like, I know you're trying so hard. I, I would never, personally, I would never say I always have an orgasm, but. I guess I'm also thinking in terms of penetration as well, not just sex in general, like sexual things. I think sex can be great and you can have a great time. And if nobody has an orgasm and it sometimes that's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yep, yep. And yeah, I mean, it's not frequent, you know, but yeah, sometimes it just doesn't happen. Sure. And that's, yeah. And a lot of guys, I think, unfortunately, don't believe that when women say that. And, These yeah. dudes you're talking to are really argumentative and <laughs> they don't uh, believe well, you at all. Actually, actually uh, like that, oh, God, I can't tell you how many the times 
well, actually, uh, I heard that women, and I'm like, oh yeah, what did you hear about women? What was that? Oh, uh -huh. please, please tell me. Just please tell me about me women. Know. John, oh my God, one time, uh, we talk a lot about a lot of weird stuff in my job, but one time we were talking about birth control and IUDs, and like, I have an IUD, and like, I know how it works because I fucking have one. I was interrupted so many times trying to educate about the IUD by all the guys I work with. I was so mad. I was so mad because I was like, y'all, you're saying all the, no, it's not how it is. That is not correct. That is not, no, no. But I, I just had to, I just gave up because I was so angry. I was like, you guys, actually, I actually know like a lot of cool guys, you know, um, but then they're just those, I don't know, some days I feel like they just, I think it's, um, men also have hormones, you know. Did you know that, John? Men also have hormones. And I've I, experienced honestly, one or two of them. Yeah, and I think, honestly, guys also experience, like, uh, not a PMS, obviously, but just certain days where the testosterone's a little higher and they're like, they got, they got some stuff. Oh. I also know about birth control. I will tell you. And I'm like, okay, cool, buddy. All right. <laughs> Sometimes the stubbornness is just so pervasive and, it, and the, the unwillingness to listen is just everywhere and you just get tired of combating it. Um, I'm more than willing to try to um, kind of maybe help them see a different side of things or at least the way that I think about things. And, and, um, and I think trying to communicate on that kind of level um, can really help uh, kind of negate some stubbornness and that kind of thing. Cause nobody wants to be told that they're dumb. Nobody wants to be told that they're ignorant or closed-minded. I think it what was you just... did there where you asked a question, I think that mm -hmm. is a really great technique for talking with someone who doesn't share your same views necessarily. Just mm -hmm. ask them questions like, how did you come to this opinion? Why do you mm -hmm. feel this way? And don't do it in an attacky way. I generally yeah. do it when I talk to someone, say a Republican, when I mm -hmm. talk to them and I ask them questions like that, more often than not, they don't have a reason for thinking that way and they kind of get pissed off and they start uh, spouting off talking points. So, mm -hmm. but a lot of times also you'll run into somebody who is a thoughtful individual and they'll be like, well, I think this way because dot, 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 dot. And then you're, then you're talking and then you're having a conversation. We've all been shitty people sometimes and we all learn from that and we grow. When it comes to sex and relationships where there's mm -hmm. no real clear like guidebook you can read and follow yeah it's messy and complicated mm -hmm. and everyone's different yeah everyone is different so for today i thought maybe we would just do some straight up education and this might even be education to you and me because this is an article that comes from npr and it is a glossary of gender identity terms which I think would be really beneficial just to put out there. So this glossary was developed with help from GLAAD, as well as the National Center for Transgender Equality, the Trans Journalists Association, and a whole bunch of other folks. This is not an exhaustive guide. Uh, it is Western and US centric. Other cultures might have different labels and different conceptions of gender, but this is what we've got going on in the US. All right. I'd like to get us started with uh... All right. Uh, sex refers to a person's biological status and is typically assigned at birth, usually on the basis of external anatomy. Sex is typically categorized as male, female, or intersex. Gender is often defined as a social construct of norms, behaviors, and roles that varies between societies and over time. Gender is often categorized as male, female, or non binary. Gender identity is one's own internal sense of self and their gender, whether that is man, woman, neither, or both. Unlike gender expression, gender identity is not outwardly visible to others. Great. Gender expression is how a person presents gender outwardly through behavior, clothing, voice, or other perceived characteristics. Society identifies these cues as masculine or feminine, although what is considered masculine or feminine changes over time and varies by culture. Cisgender is an adjective that describes a person whose gender identity aligns with the sex they were assigned at birth. 
Transgender or simply trans is an adjective used to describe someone whose gender identity differs from the sex assigned at birth. A transgender man, for example, is someone who was listed as female at birth, but whose gendered identity is male. Non-binary is a term that can be used by people who do not describe themselves or their genders as fitting into categories of man or woman. A range of terms are used to refer these to these experiences. Non-binary and gender queer are among the terms that are sometimes used. Agender is an adjective that can describe a person who does not identify as any gender. Gender expansive is an adjective that can describe someone with a more flexible gender identity that might be associated with a typical gender binary. Gender transition is a process a person may take to bring themselves and or their bodies into alignment with their gender identity. Gender dysphoria refers to psychological distress that results from an incongruence between one's sex assigned at birth and one's gender identity. Not all trans people experience dysphoria and those who do may experience it at varying levels of intensity. Sexual orientation refers to the enduring physical, romantic, and or emotional attraction to members of the same and or other genders, including lesbian, gay, bisexual, and straight orientations. Intersex is an umbrella used to describe people with differences in reproductive anatomy, chromosomes, or hormones that do not fit typical definitions of male and female. Rebecca, it's been an amazing week of shows with you. You, I yeah. have thoroughly enjoyed talking to you this week. Thanks so much have, for joining us. It has been really nice to catch up, yeah. So I hope you'll have me on again for another week sometime. Absolutely, it's happening. Awesome, right. cool, good to see you. All right, Bye. thank you. And uh, we'll see all of you next week. Bye-bye. Yes.